Shalom. Yasha Allah. Peace be unto you. Israel, brothers and sisters. And once again, I'm your old Shabar, Judah Israel, bringing you another edition concerning Solid Foundation International Ministry. Last but not least, we also known as Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. Okay? You can simply log in on my page. Shabar Judah Israel on YouTube. And happily be edified through the spirit and power of Yahweh by some y'all shot. Now, on today, we're going to get straight into the lesson. And this lesson is going to be, should I eat meat or should I be a vegan? Okay, because we have certain brothers that saying that certain Israelite men and women are not to eat meats. And that's totally incorrect. We, got, we have certain brothers that's telling other brothers that they cannot eat meat. That, that's a capital offense, which is really not. It just goes to show that how unlearned these brothers are. And they don't read their Bibles. And they don't even believe in the Bible. Most brothers out there don't even believe in the Bible. But that's cool because if you don't believe in the Bible, Yahweh by Shimeon Shai, when he comes back, to judge Babylon the Great, to judge this wicked ass country, you're gonna know the true power of Yahweh by Shimon Yahweh Shai when destruction is carried out on America. So, double honors to the elders, salutations to the Akhium. Last but not least, all praises and glorification and due honor is to Yahweh by Hashem. Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Yeshua Shalom. Okay? Who the world calls God and Jesus Christ. Should I eat meat or should I be a vegan? Should I eat meat or should I just go vegetarian? Let's get understanding behind this topic. Okay? Because it's not wrong if you choose to eat meat and it's not wrong if you choose to just be a vegan. But you shouldn't judge your brother that's eating meat or you shouldn't judge your brother that's going to be uh, a vegan. Romans 14 and 1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubt for disputations. Now, Romans 14, 1, concerning the weak in the faith. That's basically a brother that don't have a complete understanding. The one that's weak in the faith, he, had, he does not have a complete understanding behind uh, meats and vegetables that are to be consumed. Okay? Romans 14 and 2. For one believes that he may eat all things, another who is weak eating herbs. One brother believes that he can eat all type of meats, not, not unclean meats, but all type of meats that's fitted for the dietary law. All meats that are clean, kosher meats. For one believes that he can eat all things, kosher meats and vegetables. Okay? And another who is weak, this is Romans 14, 2, another who is weak eating herbs. So you have one strong brother in the faith and you have one weak brother in the faith pursuing Romans 14, 2. But a strong brother believes that he can eat all things like meats and vegetables. Okay, once again, these meats are fitted for the dietary law. These are clean meats. Because when it says all things, it's not talking about anything that, uh, anything on the market, including unclean animals. No. All things is meaning that all meats that are fitted to be consumed according to the dietary law and vegetables. So why believe that he can eat meats and vegetables? Another who is weak only eating herbs. Well, the guy that sent me a comment concerning one of my videos and just insist on that you cannot eat meat. He insists on that eating meat is a, a, a total violation or a capital offense and no one should eat meat. Well, brother, you don't know the scriptures. You are in earth. You don't know what the hell you're talking about because the Most High is not dealing with you first and foremost. The Most High has taken his spirit from you, brother, and that's why you the way you are. That's why your mind is all over the damn place because you don't understand the scriptures because the most is not dealing with you in the spirit. So you want to try to convince everyone else out there that eating that eating meats is wrong, which is which is not. Okay? That's the weak brother, pursuing Romans 14 and 2. 
It says one who is weak only eating herbs. Like this, like this guy. I'm not gonna say your name, but you know who you are. The guy that wanna run around telling other people that they cannot eat meat. Then they want to come down on people because they chose to eat meat. Well, you weak in the faith, brother. You don't have no damn understanding. You weak in the faith. Pursuing the Romans 14, 2. That's the weak one that only eateth herbs. Romans 14 and 3. Let not him that eat it despise him that eat it not. And let and let not him which eat it not judge him that eat it. For God hath received him. Now, what Romans 14, 3 talking about? It simply is elaborating on, let not him that eat it despise him that eat not. So, simply what it's saying, the person who chooses to eat meat should not despise the other who chooses not to eat meat, and vice versa. So, one person that's eating meat shouldn't be hateful and despise the other man, okay, that chooses not to eat meat. And vice versa, okay? The man that chose not to eat meat shouldn't despise the man that chose to go vegan or only eat vegetables, okay? That's what it's talking about. Romans 14 and 3. Let not him that eat it despise him that eat it not, okay? Like I eat meat. So let not the one that eat meat, such as me, despise him that don't eat meat. And this video is not made for to despise and hate this brother because he chose not to eat meat. Okay, brother, this particular brother that says eating meat is a capital offense and that is a violation. Well, the type of brother that sent me that comment on my page, well, if you chose to eat meat, well, if you chose not to eat meat, if you chose not to eat meat, that's okay. That's, that's cool with me. That's why Romans 14, 3 say, let not him that eat it despise him that eat it not. Let the man that, that eat me, let him that eat me not hate the one that chose not to eat me. So I don't hate you because you chose not to eat me. But you got to understand, you shouldn't hate others and come against others that choose to eat me. Romans 14, 3, and let not him which eat it, see, let us not him that eat it, not judge him that eat it. For God has received him. Romans 14 and 3. The person who chooses not to eat meat shouldn't judge the other who chooses to eat meat. Okay? I'm going to say that again, pursuing the Romans 14 and 3. The person who chooses not to eat meat shouldn't judge the other who chooses to eat meat. And vice versa. All right? Okay? For God has received them, according to Romans 14 and 3. Now, what does that mean, for God has received them? Both people are accepted by the Most High. Rather, if you only eat vegetables or if you eat vegetables and meat. Okay? And it's talking about clean meat according to the dietary law. So that's what it's talking about. It says, for God has received him. God has received both brothers. Once again, the brother who only eat vegetables, God has received. And the brother who chose to only eat meat, God has received. Or the brother who eat meats and vegetables, God has received. Romans 14 and 4. Who are thou that judges another man's servant to his own masters? He's standing or falling. Yeah, he should be holding up for God is able to make him stand. Now what is he talking about? The most high decides what's right or wrong. That's why I say, who are thou that judges another man's servant? Who are you that want to judge a particular man because he chose to eat meat? Just because you don't eat meat, and you only eat vegetables. You live a vegan life. You want to judge the man or come against the man that eat meat. Romans 14, 4 say, who thou art that judges another man's servant? Because the most high is the head in charge. And he decides who does 
he decides what's right or wrong. Okay? If the Most High doesn't condone something, we cannot condone it. That's simply what Romans 14 and 4 is talking about. Romans 14 and 5. One man esteeming one day above another, another esteeming every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. So, this is not changing the Sabbath day to Sunday because a lot of pastors are trying to use Romans 14 and 5 and say, oh yeah, this is justifying the Sabbath day being changed to Sunday. No, that's not. People don't have no understanding on Romans 14 and 5. Okay, because when you go into Exodus 20 and 8, it tells you, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And Exodus 31 to 17 tells you that the Sabbath is forever. That we should keep the Sabbath forever. And the Most High doesn't change. So he ain't changed anything. He ain't changed no Sunday to the, uh, no Sabbath day to Sunday according to Romans 14 and 5. That's not what that's talking about. Because the Most High don't change. Malachi 3 and 6 tells you that the Most High changed not. But however, Romans 14, 5, one man esteeming one day above another, another esteeming every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. What is that saying? Like a certain day that someone makes special for a person, personal reasons. Okay? Something good may happen to someone on a certain day. That day becomes special to that person. As it comes around, but to someone else, it's just an ordinary day. That's what it's talking about, Romans 14 and 5. One man is thing one day above another. Like, uh, to whoever that, be, that might be having a special event or a celebration. That day, that day to them uh, basically is a special day. But to another man, it's just like an ordinary day. That's all Romans 14 and 5 saying. One man is thing one day above another. Another esteem of every day of life. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Verse 6 out of Romans 14. He that regarded the day regarded it unto the law. And he, the Lord Jehovah. And he that regarded not the day to the Lord Jehovah, he does not regard it. He that eat it, eat to Jehovah, the Lord. For he give it God thanks. And he that eat it not to the Lord Jehovah, he eat it not and give God thanks. What Romans 14, 6 is basically talking about. The person acknowledges this day special, but he doesn't with respect towards the most high. That's what it means. When it says, he that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. And, and he that regarded not the day to the Lord, he does not regard it. So it's one man that takes his day out take special time out and acknowledge the most high and all what he does. But if another, but another a particular man, he don't he don't give a damn about the most high. He don't even think about the most high. Okay? But he acknowledges the day special. He just don't give respect to the most high. That's what Romans 14 and 6 is talking about. Brother, a person chose to regard this day as being special and it's just an ordinary day to this person. Or rather, this person acknowledged the most high. This person acknowledged this day special, and they acknowledge the most high. But this particular person acknowledged this day special, but he don't acknowledge the most high. Basically, it's your decision to esteem a certain day above another. That's what it's talking about. All right? And it also tell you in verse 6, he that eats... Eat it to the Lord, for he that give God thanks, and he that eat it not to the Lord, he eat not, he eat it not, and give God thanks. Now what that's talking about. One man chooses to eat meat, and he thanks the most high. Behind the, behind the meat that he's eating. Another man chooses not to eat meat, and he thanks the most high. Okay? This is uh, verse 6 out of Romans 14. All right? Both people are justified in this decision. So 
Rather one man choose to eat meat and thank the Most High, or rather another man choose to not eat meat and eat vegetables and thank the Most High. Basically what it's saying is both people are justified. Okay. So you got to understand at this time also, at this time, this issue was a big deal because a certain man was teaching that it was a sin to eat meat like this brother that I know about. A certain man was teaching that it was a sin to eat meat during that time. You might be the same nigga in the reincarnation. All right? That want to come on my page and give negative comments concerning meat cannot be consumed and try to tell others that meat cannot be consumed. You might be the same nigga in the reincarnation back in the ancient world saying the same guys that basically believe that you could not eat meat, that it was a sin to eat meat. It's not a sin to eat meat. We're going to show you that. Romans 14, 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather, that no man put a thumb in the block or any occasion to fall in his brother's way. That's Romans 14 and 13. So, you can't judge a particular man because he chose to eat meat, and you can't judge a particular man because he only chose to eat vegetables, man. Okay? You shouldn't put a stumbling block on an occasion to fall for your brother. To make your brother fall, man. All right? Romans 14, 14. I know and I'm persuaded by the Most High, I'm persuaded by Yahweh Shai, that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that is deeming anything to be unclean, to him it is, un to him it is unclean. Now what that's talking about? Romans 14 and 14. I know I'm persuaded by Yahweh Shai that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him that is deeming anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Brothers and sisters, what it's talking about is um, basically a certain man was saying you couldn't eat meats because it makes a man unclean. But Paul stated that was not true. But to him that esteeming anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. So if you desire within yourself, if you want to eat meats, lawful meats, okay, then that's okay. All right? But to the brother that feels like you should eat meats, it's unclean to him. So once again, if you want to eat lawful meats, that's okay. But to the brother that chose not to eat meat at all and to be a vegan, he considered that unclean. Well, guess what? That's unclean to him, not you. Because you know, according to the law, that it's spiritual. All right? That's what it's talking about. So, uh, back up with uh, Romans 14, 13. Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Paul is not talking about you can eat any type of meat, like I stated earlier. He's only talking about that if the guy chose to eat meat, it has to be clean meats according to the dietary law. You can look at Acts 28.17, okay? Acts 28.17 uh, basically is on, on, the, on the behalf of Paul when he called out the chief of the Jews and he said that he, he basically, that he had committed nothing against the people or customs of, or, 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 or of his fathers. That's not a fact. Let's go to Acts 28.17 right quick.
Acts 28, 17, because Paul never said you can eat unclean meats. The meat he's talking about is lawful meats. Acts 28, 17, it came to pass that after these three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, man and brother, thought I have committed nothing against the people or custom of, of our fathers. Now the fathers was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. So Paul was basically telling you at Acts 28 and 17 that basically he did it he didn't do anything against the customs customs of his forefathers. Like Paul, basically what he said, I didn't, I, I never broke the laws. Pursuing the Acts 28 and 17. That's why Paul said that uh, I have not, I have committed nothing against the people or customs of my forefathers because he never broke the law, man. Pursuing the Acts 28 and 17. So Paul never stated that you can eat unclean meats in the 14th chapter of Romans. I just wanted to bring that out. The meat that he's telling you that I'm choking for man chose to eat, these are dietary wise meats, man. Okay? So Romans 14, 14. I know and I'm persuaded by Yahweh Shai that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteeming anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Um, like I stated earlier, if you desire within yourself to eat meats, then that's okay. Okay? But the other brother over here that's eating vegetables, how dare he come up to you and tell you that that's out of order and unclean because you chose to eat meats and he chose to eat vegetables. The guy that told to eat vegetables, looking at the guy that eat meat and want to consider that unclean, well, it's unclean to him. It's unclean to the vegan guy. But not, but not, not to the guy that's eating the meat. According to the law. Romans 14, 15. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitable, cher charitable. Destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ died. Romans 14, 15 talk about if your brother be grieved with the meat. What is it talking about? If you are consuming meat around certain ones that's offended by that's offended by it, because certain ones believe that you shouldn't eat meat. If you are consuming meat around ones who is offended, is offended by that, like this guy, he's offended by one people who eat meat. Well, if you eat meat around him, or some people that believe the same belief system as he believe, it says that uh, you don't walk in charity. You don't walk in love because what you want to do, you don't want to do that around that certain brother. Let's just say that if that brother don't eat meat, then you wouldn't want to do that around here because that's not that's not using wisdom. If you know he don't eat meat, why why eat chicken in front of him if he's a vegan? And if you know uh, eating meat is a capital offense in his eyes, why would you go around and eat meat? You know what I'm saying? That's not walking charitably. Pursuing the Romans um, 14 and 15. That's what it's saying. That's not walking charitably. So even though the meat that you may eat be eating is lawful to you, and you know that it's clean, and that there's nothing there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you shouldn't do that around your brother that's weak, and that feels like meats shouldn't be eaten. Okay, because if you do that, you don't consider their feelings, and um, you're not walking in love. You don't consider that that vegan's feelings if you just want to cheat to eat meat around. Verse 15, like it was saying, it said, uh, do not destroy him with your meat from whom Christ died. Romans 14, 16, let not then your good be evil spoken of. Okay? Do not let what the Most High allows to be used against you because of your, it be, for you being inconsiderate of others. Okay? So if you go around vegans and they know that they, you know that they don't, they don't like eating meat and they don't like people who eat meat, why would you go around those vegans eating meat? Okay. That's why Romans fourteen sixteen say, let not let not your good be evil spoken of, cause you wisdom man. Just you know they don't you know if you know they don't eat meat, don't do it around, because then your good works will be evil spoken of. All right, Romans fourteen twenty two. 
as our faith. Have, have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he allowed. Romans 14, 22. It's just simply saying, don't offend your brothers through your faith. Because you say, uh, you can say, because you could condemn yourself through your faith if you are not considered for others because a, a, a particular person that's saying, oh, we can't eat meat. Okay, and then you know his you know his belief system, and you go around him eating meat anyway, knowing that this brother don't like people who eat meat or consume meat. But you go around him eating meat anyway. But guess what? That's talk, that, that's basically you're gonna condemn yourself. Why? Because you're not using wisdom, man. You you become a stumbling block before your brother. You're not using wisdom. So you shouldn't offend your brothers through your faith because you know what's right and you know that you can't eat meat. This brother is weak, remember? This brother is weak. So he might not be to that degree of knowledge where you at and you can basically become a stumbling block and you can also condemn yourself. So you don't want to condemn yourself through your faith and not be considered for others. You want to show charity, cheer, 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 what they call that. Uh, you want to show love, charity. And um, Romans 14, 23. And he that is doubted is, is damned if he eat. Because he eateth not of faith. For whosoever is not of faith is sin. And like I said, man, that's, so, that's pretty much talking about should I eat meat or be a vegan? So I hope you got understanding behind that. I know it was short lesson, but I felt that I was inspired to do that on the behalf of this brother, man, you know, that want to insist on that eating meat is an offense, okay, and that we don't supposed to eat meat, things of that nature. Um, I believe I pretty much went over everything. So yeah, until next time, brothers and sisters, I hope you took something in. It was edifying. I am Shabar Judy Israel, representing the Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. Until next time, Shalom.